Well, meantime, lawmakers in Oklahoma have passed one of the most pro-life bills in the nation. The law bans abortions from the moment of fertilization with a few exceptions. The proposal now heads to the Republican governor's desk, who is expected to sign it into law. The White House calls the bill extreme, absurd, and ultra MAGA. And joining me now to discuss is Prudence Robertson, host of EWTN Pro Life Weekly. Prudence, always great to have you on. Good to see you today. Thanks, Tracy. You too. Well, before we get to the Oklahoma bill, I want to talk about Archbishop Cordelione's comments. What are your thoughts? Well, the first thing that came to my mind was finally, action is being taken to hold Nancy Pelosi accountable for the fact that time and again she has abandoned Catholics in endorsing outright abortion on demand up until the moment of birth paid for by taxpayers. And I think Archbishop Cordelione pointed out something very important. This, this announcement that he is making, it is not political in any way. It is pastoral. He is, uh, he is looking to church teaching on this, which teaches that abortion is the preeminent moral issue. We have to defend these unborn lives. And I'm so thankful to Archbishop Cordelione for speaking up and holding Nancy Pelosi accountable. And I'll also just add, I had Michael Warsaw join me on EWT Pro-Life Weekly this week to talk about the fact that Pelosi is not the only uh, Catholic politician who is who is professing and supporting abortion. Joe Biden, our president, who claims to be Catholic, does the same thing. So we have to keep holding these politicians accountable. Yeah, I mean, it is a very significant uh, statement. What type of impact do you think this will have? Well, I hope that other bishops and other parts of the country will do the same thing, will call out these, these hypocritical leaders, you know? They're supposed to be our shepherds. They're supposed to be guiding us in um, teaching us what is true. And of course, standing up for the most innocent among us. So I hope that it causes a wave. Um, we'll see. Yeah. Well, Oklahoma, going back to that, is really standing up yes. uh, for the unborn. Let's talk a little bit about that bill and then also the White House's response to it. Mm, yes, absolutely. So we are so excited to see this bill in Oklahoma pass, the Life at Conception Act. You know, we in the pro-life movement don't apologize that uh, we want to see states everywhere passing laws just like this, laws that ban all abortions, not just, you know, limiting abortion somewhat. We want to see all abortions end, you know, and we have to go back to Roe versus Wade and look at this. You know, that was a legal sham, and it convinced so many people that there is a right to abortion and that innocent unborn children in the womb do not have a right to life, that women have a right to take the life of an innocent other, you know, and that we should all be lauding that and praising that. It's so terrible. And so we're so excited to see this law passed in Oklahoma. It's no surprise that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, you know, they're calling this an ultra MAGA bill. You know, President Trump was the most pro-life president. He is the one who helped lay the groundwork for these states to be able to pass these pro-life laws. He is the one that has appointed enough justices to the Supreme Court that we can be at this moment today where finally, after 50 years, um, the things will be set right. You know, states will have the power to work this out on their own and debate this issue and, you know, protect the unborn. Yeah, absolutely. We're running out of time. Sure. Uh, but one thing I quickly want to talk about, some new developments with Planned Parenthood and a number of those centers closing down, uh, quite a few in Vermont as well as, I believe, in Indiana as well. Can you talk about that? Yeah, well, it's, again, no surprise. You know, life is winning in America, across the nation and across the world. And it's no surprise that people who work in these facilities, I understand that, you know, a lot of these places are closing down because of staff shortages. It's because people are seeing abortions happen they're repulsed by it. When people see the reality of abortion, they turn away from it. They want to turn what is what to what is good and what is true. And, you know, we see so many people doing that. Praise God. So many states passing laws that are more reflective of, you know, the fact that unborn life, protecting it is deeply rooted in the history of our nation and what our laws should be. You know, so it's so exciting to see these brick and mortar facilities closing down. We have to be careful about the chemical abortion pill. You know, Planned Parenthood can still send those anywhere. Um, but it's certainly a win to see these these facilities closing down. It sure is. And thank you so much for coming on and talking about of all course. this today. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Prudence. Thanks, Tracy.